Good day, church family. It's Crystal Manu here with another episode of Up and to the Right. We just got finished with a wonderful celebration, celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So today's episode is going to continue that conversation. We will have Pastor Rodney and Pastor Hetty from our Guthrie location discussing some of the highs of today and the impact of Dr. King's legacy. Enjoy. Well, thank you, Crystal, for that introduction. And we are excited about today. Right now, it is late afternoon. And so let me just ask you this, Pastor Hetty. I am so glad that you're joining me. Yep. You've come down from Guthrie to be a part today. But what has been your highlight for today so far? Oh, my goodness. The MLK event just was fabulous. Um, the music, the conversations that were had, all centered around the legacy of Dr. King, but just the impact uh, that is heaven today. It was fabulous. It was a great event. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I so enjoyed that. And I, I just, I hope that everyone listening right now, if you did not see that, go back to Facebook and watch it, yep. share it with others and uh, make your comments. Yeah. And I, I just really inspired me and encouraged me yep. as we look back on the past, but also looking into the future. Yeah. One of the most famous speeches is I have a dream, right? speech by Dr. King, and today, um, Officer Williams, he, he's a police officer, he read Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, you know, and I sat there and it felt like I had never heard the speech. I was locked in, and it just spoke to the, the, the ability of Dr. King to use words to really um, push change. Well, words either bring death or life. True. And obviously, Martin Luther King brought life with his words. Yep. And today, not only that, I dream, have a dream speech that was given, um, but every single one of the panel individuals was just, they brought the gospel. Yeah. The gospel is good news. It's good news of what? It's good news of Jesus Christ mm. and how he changes lives and makes all things new. Yeah. And it was inspired for me. Now, let me ask you, how has Dr. King's uh, work uh, impacted your life? Yeah, you know, uh, one of the things, so working at North Church, I, I was telling, having a conversation yesterday with a couple of different people, and, and I was talking about when I was young, I remember there was a time when uh, the MLK Day was not celebrated. Like, we didn't have this day that we have today. And over time, that MLK became a day that we celebrated the legacy of Dr. King. And, and then the workplaces began to uh, uh, let people off on those days. And I remember three years or four years, you can, you can tell me which one, when we decided as a church to make that a day that we would give our, our team off and let them celebrate this day, let it be a day of reflection, let it be a day of serving. And it's those moments that continue to happen year after year that little by little, I continue to see Dr. King's impact in my life. And I think uh, whenever I think about my community and we're just talking about and laughing about North Church Guthrie and even North Church as a whole, the diversity of our churches in, in heaven is heart of like, I don't want to ever see our church be all one particular ethnicity group. And that's because of Dr. King, you know, continue to push love and cont continue to push diversity and what little white kids and black kids holding hands and playing together. That should start in the church. And I love that I'm a part of a, a local church that is really pushing that diversity. And, and thanks to your leadership. Well, thank you for just uh, jumping in and making a difference, Pastor Hetty. You and your family have been crucial uh, to just moving us forward in the area of influencing all of our church to grab hold of this value uh, that is so important to us of being diverse, a diverse yeah. church. Because it represents the kingdom of God. Yeah. You look at the book of Revelation, standing around the throne of God, worshiping God. It says every tribe, every kindred, every tongue, every people group. That is what heaven is. Yes. And so I just assume start practicing a little heaven on earth. Yeah, for sure. Thy yeah. kingdom come, thy will be done. That means that we ought to, as Christians, to begin to practice mm -hmm. what heaven's going to be like then, yeah. practice it now. Yeah. Let's, let me ask you that. Like, okay. what, what did today mean to you? You know, because... Like you're asking me the questions, are we having this conversation? But you pushed this, you, meaning that you encouraged it. 
and, and being a, a white male in your 50s, you've been around long enough to experience racism and what that looks like. You've probably been a part of some conversations that you may have never shared with your friends of color because you, you know what that looks like. What does this look like for you today? Well, first off, I'm a little bit offended that you mentioned my age. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted people to know that you're older than what you look. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it was very special for me. Um, there was often times, in fact, now I get a little choked up too, because it means a lot to me. Oh, uh, because I've seen people lift themselves and develop, elevate themselves over other people. Uh, that's not the heart of God. Mm. And the heart of God is that all people are made in the image of God. Yeah. It doesn't matter our skin tone. It doesn't matter. And it's, and it's not just even the skin tone on the outside. It's also racial issues as far as uh, economic things that people, maybe they come from a different socioeconomic level or they are a country kid that speaks different than somebody from the city, that all of us are one people. Mm -hmm. And so when I sat and listened today, it just brought tears of joy in my heart. Uh, and also tears of like, I wanna see us move forward more. Yeah. Uh, I want it to become a reality of what Martin Luther King dreamed of. Yeah. And what he did not get to see become reality, we are seeing become reality, but we got a long ways to go. And to be honest oh. with you, as long as there's sin around, there's going to be racism. Mm -hmm. There's going to be all other types of issues. And the hope of that is the cross of Christ. Yeah. And Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. And when you have Jesus transform your life, all of a sudden you see every single person differently. Mm -hmm. And that's what I loved about the message that came yeah. off the stage today yeah. is that people were emphasizing Christ is the answer. Yeah. He is the hope of the world. And you look in the scripture, Jesus is continually engaging people that were different from him. Mm. Yeah. He would go to the Samaritan woman, mm -hmm. the woman caught in the act of adultery that was the outcast at that time. She may have been a Jew, but she was the outcast and Jesus embraces her. So he's embracing those that others are kicking to the curb. Those that Others are trying to elevate themselves above that person. Mm -hmm. Jesus embraces them. And may we be people like that too, Pastor Hetty. Yeah. yeah, and today a lot of the conversation went back to the heart. And I love that we shared the gospel today. You know, because the more you talk about it being a heart issue, but never given the solution to that heart issue, which is somebody coming to know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, is often missed. We talk about the heart, we talk about this change, but how does this change happen? That's from sharing the gospel. And, and I, was, uh, I was honored that I could be on the stage and see that happen. You know, you know, the book of John says that if we say we love God, but don't love our brother, the mm -hmm. truth is not in us. Yeah. And because he is saying pretty much, if you um, love God, you're going to love your fellow man. Yeah. And let me ask you this, what, what is the one message you hope people take away from today? Yeah, I think hope. You know, I think, I think there was a, a message of hope today. One, seeing so many people of different walks of life come on stage and have that center piece of Jesus Christ, that's real hope. And I hope people could walk away and be like, hey, there has been real change and that's real hope. The Andersons, the, that couple, 35 years, biracial couple, hearing their story of how... The, what they be first started going through when they first got together to now, them even speaking to how things have changed, that brings hope uh, to, to a lot of different people from a lot of different walks of life. So I think people have been impacted today. Mm -hmm. And I know that if they go and watch what you and I experienced firsthand on stage in the room, I really feel like that it is going to encourage them, impact them, and... Uh, I, I just hope they do. And then I hope they share it with other people. Yeah. Um, but what, what do you think people, how they're going to be impacted, their yeah. takeaway from today? How do you hope people are impacted? You know, the thing that I hope that happens for people is that they begin to have conversations when they go back to work. You know, what 2020 brought was a lot of eye-opening things around a lot of different issues, the George Floyd, uh, those kind of things happening. 
And sometimes what can happen is those conversations can die off. I think it's events like this that kind of help spur those conversations to continue to happen uh, for people to really examine themselves and say, okay, let me, let me look at myself and, and, and see if I'm really a part of making real change happen in the right way. And so I think today I hope people walk away and just continue to have more conversations. In the comment section of the live event, I, I was looking at it's like 500 and something comments, which shows that people were highlighting different things and having conversations. So I hope those move into interacting with phone calls, people talking at the water cooler at work and about these things. So what about people, you know, you, you those conversations, <clears throat> but I think that there is a level of that conversation mm. that has to go up a notch, not just like, let's debate this or let's just, no, inviting people into your world mm -hmm. where you really do life with other people. Yeah. There's something about the conversation going to a whole nother level when that happens, when you have dinner with somebody mm. in your house that is different from you. That different from you could be a skin color. They, they come, it could be a black family and it could be a white family coming together and having dinner together. It could be somebody that comes from another country or whatever it may be, but just setting down, breaking bread. Yeah. There's something powerful about that. Would you agree? Yeah, no, there's, there's nothing like bringing food into this uh, s scenario, you know, and uh, when you do bring people in your home, I think that speaks to a different level of your commitment to have a real conversation about these things. And, and I would say too, like be willing to have those hard, uncomfortable questions ready to be asked whenever you do have these conversations because sometimes we do keep it real surface but instead of just really asking those hard questions and those hard questions are going to be needed for us to go to the next step so let's think about that in regards to those hard questions so we, you, we're kind of mentioning that to me what would that look like like what type of question would you ask me or in a situation what, what kind of questions would you ask you know i don't know if i've asked you this question but one of the questions that i always ask i'm not as afraid to ask just about anybody, as long as I, I feel like there's a sense of understanding there. But one of the questions that I ask white males often is, um, if your daughter brought home an African-American boyfriend, how does that make you feel? What would, what, what would be uh, your reaction to something like that? And, and I remember here, maybe three months ago, uh, I had a gentleman reach out to me and he said, hey, I wanna talk to you about uh, this race issue. And when we sat down and talked, that was one of my questions that I eventually asked him after a while. I was like, let me ask you this, because he has all girls. He has all beautiful little girls. And I said, where will you be at when your daughter brings home an African-American? And he starts to cry. And this guy and I, we don't have like a super intimate uh, relationship, but to see him open up in that way, and then this is what I was so proud of him when he said this. He says, Hetty, and I want you to hold me accountable to that. I want you to ask me that question periodically, is where is my heart concerning my daughters dating an African-American male? And when he said that to me, that let me know that he has some issues there. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's what he was saying to me. Like, I have some challenges here, and I need you to help me with this. Yeah. You know, and so uh, we got to continue to ask those kind of questions. That's a very good one. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now, let me ask, what... What do you see the next step for us um, in our churches, in the community, to continually move forward and make a mm -hmm. difference? You know, we're a church of small groups. And uh, I think what needs to happen is in those small groups, we got to continue to make sure that those, these conversations stay around and make sure that they're Christ-centered. Uh, I think there's, there needs to be a lot of people sharing the gospel with people because if we're saying that, that Christ is what's going to bring this real change, but we're never sharing the gospel. Mm. They only hear it on Sunday morning. Yeah. But then how often are we inviting people to church on Sunday morning? Yeah. So if you think about this, people only come to church. We're never inviting people. Like, are we really spreading the gospel? Yeah. You know, people got to start sharing that gospel in their small groups and then taking those small groups and encouraging our small groups to do that in the workplace. Yeah. Because, Pastor Ryan, we can do all the talking we want. Yeah. But in my hearts of hearts, I believe that the gospel is where this real change is going to happen. And if we don't keep sharing his love, we're going to continue to have these same conversations and no real change. I think real change is going to come when people say, you know what, I'm going to get bold and I'm going to start sharing the gospel with people and remove themselves. You and I just had this conversation. That's a challenging thing to do. Yeah. 
But at the end of the day, that's the real answer yeah. is the gospel of Jesus Christ and letting the Holy Spirit do his thing in people's lives. Oh, the church needs to be the church. Yes. Bring the hope of the world. You know, the, I, we believe the church is the hope of the world. Yeah. And, and not because North Church is perfect, but because Jesus Christ has established his church. And he said the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And what I love about the church, when you're talking about the, the church, when the church rises up and is the church and is the gospel mm -hmm. and being the gospel, mm -hmm. man, it should look diverse. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about what I see at North Church is that we've got old and we've got young and we've got middle age and we've got 20 somethings and 30s and 40s and then we've got married people and then we've got single people and then we've got people who have been divorced and, and that are single now and we've got people who have all different types and then we have black and then we have white and then we have all different nationalities. Mm -hmm. We have Latino, we have people from all over the world coming to North Church. And you know, that excites me yeah. because it lets me know that we're moving in the direction that I feel like is the heartbeat of God. Yeah. And I want to see us continue to move that direction. But I want individuals not just to walk into the church and just look around and say, oh, I come to a diverse church and feel comfortable about that. I want them to engage, yes. put themselves in uncomfortable positions so that they can experience something that they've never experienced in their yeah. life. And when they do, they will actually begin to grow in their faith in Christ. Yeah. What would you say, like, first steps? So there's a pastor listening right now, watching, and he's saying, man, I want a more diverse church. Yeah. Well, I was talking to somebody about that the other day. One, begin to pray. Ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. So first off, begin to ask God for that yeah. diversity. Now, I also know that sometimes we can just ask and throw out, but we never do. Because the Bible says you can ask, but ask amiss. Not with mm. any. What that means is you've got to be very targeted on how to go about that. Mm. So therefore, secondly, after you begin to ask God, you look around, there's going to be opportunities. And that will begin with that local pastor. Mm where he will see, begin to see people different from him in the community and begin to invite them into relationship together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is built on relationships. Yeah. And as you begin to invest in somebody, I know for Shannon and I, some of our investments never really came to North Church, but I believe that our investments in people that were different from us, whether that be somebody, an African-American couple, whether that be another nationality from another country, whatever it may be, that investment in somebody is actually beginning to bring re, bring in back a harvest now mm. because it's not necessarily where you plant it's what you plant Come on. and when you begin to plant those things yeah. kindness and goodness and love yeah. and really invest in people it will begin to come back and i really believe that the fruit of what we're seeing now has been because of years of planting yeah and i'm just looking for even a greater harvest that's good mm. that's good and I, and I love you say that but I, I, there's also that take some act faith without works is dead yes you know, put in the work to be able to begin to cultivate what you want to see more of. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I would say one of the things for you is, uh, and, and for your leadership, is being willing to have leadership that doesn't look like you. Yes. You know, because sometimes we can say we want something, and then you see all the leadership, and it's all one ethnicity group. Yeah. You know, one of the things here is early, you had, you know, talking about Samson Verghese. He's not African-American, but he's Indian, you know, and you started doing those kind of things early. Well, yeah, you know, so, so I pray, and then you began to begin to invite and yeah. be a part of people's lives. Yeah. You. But then thirdly, you've got to be strategic. Yeah. And that's putting people, um, diverse-looking individuals on the stage, mm -hmm. surrounding you, and not just as tokens. Okay, that's key. Yeah, because I'm not no token. No. <laughs> Whoever's listening right now, I ain't no token. You better call me or something if you think I'm. So I'll give you that example. So when, 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 I, when I asked you to come on staff at North Church, yeah. I made it very clear that um, I have prayed for you. I prayed for a black man that is a leader, that is an influencer, to be brought to North Church. I didn't get some, you know, on some, um, um, you know, headhunting Thing to go after finding that hire yes, yeah, for a, yeah. no, we prayed you in, we planted those seeds. And then when you came into North church, uh, now many years ago, uh, and when we asked you to come on staff, it was like, Hedy, I'm asking you to come on staff. We prayed you in, but I'm not hiring you because you are a black man. Mm -hmm. I'm hiring you because you are a great leader, 
an influencer, a godly man, a man of character. You fit the chemistry of North Church. You have the heartbeat of North Church. You have the heartbeat for the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. You being black was icing on the cake for me. Yeah. Because that was also something that I prayed for and asked God yeah. to give us. Yeah. And so I believe God honored that. Um, and so, but it wasn't just in hires, but sometimes it might not be that you have a hire, but there's people in your church that God sends. Sure. How can you invest in them and put them in positions so that, again, it's not token, they're speaking into, yeah. you're listening to them, how we can better ourselves and so that we can open the doors for more people to come in of whatever background they are. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good, that's good. And I think today's event, Going back to today's event speaks to all of that. And I think that speaks to who MLK is or these types of things that are happening here at, here at North. Well, let's do this. Would you mind, would you mind praying for us? Mm-hmm. And what I want you to pray for is that every person listening and whoever they share this with, that something clicks, that they get it. Mm-hmm. And they begin to make that, uh, take it to another level in their relationships, in their efforts, to see their church, uh, if they're listening in, or if somebody in our church is listening right now, that they begin to take extra steps to invest in other people um, that is different from them. Mm. And obviously we look at the black and white issue, and that may be part of it, but don't limit it to that. No. Whatever it may be, but we've got to sometimes get out of our silos to go out uh, to make a difference in people's lives. Yeah, let's pray. Hey, Father, I just thank you for this great opportunity to celebrate a legacy of a man that you've used in a a mighty way that after many years, his his life and what he stood for is still making a difference, Father. And Father, um, as Pastor Rodney and I continue to have this conversation regarding uh, race reconciliation, Father God, uh, we know that a part of that is... It's going back to uh, the, the first commandment is to, to love you with all our being. And then you said the, the second is to love our neighbor as ourself, Father God. And, and there's that story, Father, the, where Jesus talks about the, the good Samaritan and, and, and that individual reaching out to someone who didn't look like him, who was not a part of his ethnicity, Father God. And we want to continue to, to live in that way, Father God, and for everyone who's listening, Father, I just thank you for your Holy Spirit uh, just tugging at their heart, Father God, so they can continue to move forward in such a way that they are intentional about reaching out to people who don't look like them, who may not be a part of their family, Father God. Even talking about praying for their enemies, Father, that we are intentional about praying for people that we may have angst again, Father God, that we may not line up with, Father God, that we may see across the line, Father, that we are intentional about praying for them and their lives being impacted. And, and, And one of the things that I also pray is that we continue to dig deep into your word because as Romans 1 and 2 talks about this transformation happens by the renewing of our mind and then you said that we will know your good and perfect will and we know from you what your word says that your will is for us to love one another and we want to continue to live that out in Jesus name we pray amen amen pastor Hetty, thank you so very much I've enjoyed our time and conversation together and I want to say thank you for joining us And I look forward to seeing you again next week for Up and to the Right. Thank you.